back from him eating, the M6 was rubbish. I've just come back from Coventry. Here's what else was at the open day yesterday, anyway. Thought the idea of painting tractors was so it never went brown and rusty. <laughs> well, you can have metallic rust. It does look smart, actually. Would you call it bronze? Nice new set of carriers. Slotted discs. Back around. Looks like they've had rain here. It's a bit sticky. Looks smart, though. Black wheels. Bateman black. Quite clever, that, isn't it? How it, like, slots underneath and yeah. scoops a bit out. It's not really moving everything, but it's pretty good. Jamie's gone camera shy. So which college are you from? Morton Morrow. 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 And they're at the Chandler's Open Day. Yeah. And we're stood by a 936. There looks a bit of a beast, that's it. Yeah. In its new shape. That, that's a reasonable size plow for a 516, isn't it? Yeah, oh no, what are they? What, 160 60, horse, yeah. 20 horsepower a four, we used to reckon. We used to have a four, four and an 80 horsepower. Nice size track to that. That's what Sam needs for hedge cutting. So the edge, so we can't mow the edge cut, it's too small. Cavernland tine drill. I think you can go straight into stubbles with these. It's just a single tine on the front. Accord metering system. Probably one of the best in the world. Nice blue Valtra, if you like blue. And you can't Burbine in New Holland. The silver one with black rims again. Ideal nine with some sort of random knife drive in the middle. There's actually no knife sections there. Obviously, a belt header that lip looks quite high as well. That's higher than on the class. Big footprint on them tracks, so they look longer, don't they, than they? And on the class. That's where it thrashes the returns again, isn't it? That looks complicated. The ideal cab, it's like not as deep as the class, but it seems wider somehow. You've basically got a fent armrest. Different joystick. Fence screen, seeing me out of breath from climbing the ladder. You can't see the knife from inside the cab because it's, it's like hidden by the back of that, isn't it? Got to like lean forward to see it. Not a fan of that header. Same cab as the sprayer. The reel's in three sections. So you've got all these arms. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you have to like peer over to see that. Don't know what that screen is. It's like a screen out of a Game Boy. A lot of people would be too young to remember what a Game Boy is. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the light switches, and then there's what looks like a floppy disk. Well, again, younger mem viewers won't know what a floppy disk is. In the back of the combine, Jamie can reach the rotors. So if you block them up, you can unblock them from here. They don't look very big. This is a bit of a poor design. Little bits of bolts and stuff sticking out for stuff to hang on. This bit doesn't look very wide either, does it? No. Shaft spreaders are only half the size of on a Lexian. That's where the fans eject stuff. Yeah, that's that sieve's well narrow. That towel rail is for knocking hedges down and making the gateways wider as you're say, swinging. First gateway, that's gone in there. 
and we're taking cyclists out on right-hand bends. So that's an oil cooler mounted on the most vulnerable part of the header when you turn it into a field gateway. Yeah, I'm glad I brought a class. And I don't know where the extra 40 grand is in one of them because the 40 grand dearer than a class. They must meet nearly in the middle and then that finger doesn't cut, goes either side of it. Quite a wide throat on it though. Short dividers are a good idea though, if you get up against hedgerows. It does look mean though, in its stealth grey. This is fairly clever actually, that's why that's got a big lip. It's blowing air out of there, that way, to push stuff onto the belt. So that's a pretty trick to be fair. Just sat on the 1050 and it's got a hammock. I don't know if anyone remembers, back in the 80s, people used to have hammocks in the back windows of the cars with cuddly toys in. It's a nice touch. It was like the biggest ever washing machine kind of DPF filter that from the front looks like a speed camera or a Gatso. I'll show you when I get out, but look how wide the bonnet is. Go around and show you. Like I say, it looks like a speed camera. Looks mean. But yeah, it's like a speed camera there. That is a 936 that's been on a reclamation job, land reclamation, mixing lime into the topsoil and it's absolutely covered in lime and it's filthy and it looks cool. And here is a couple of 818s, 828. I think one of them's Jamie's actually. It's like a high tip Stuart dump. This was the quiz question the other day. It is in fact the brake for the flywheel on the baler. If you have a problem and you want to stop the baler quick, you can pull this, it puts the brake on and it stops it. Or if you're working on it, you can do it so nothing rolls and moves inside and hurts you. This is today's quiz question. What's that? If you think you know what it is, leave a comment below. Right, I feel I need to explain a little bit about this whole fertilizer situation. So CF Fertilizers is owned by an American company he kind of bought out all the different fertilizer manufacturers. There's only really two left. So it's rather than them saying they've got a monopoly, it's a duopoly. So Yara is another one, but they're based in Norway. Anyway, CF shut the plant last week. Obviously cashed in on the gas that they bought forwards because they have, for years they've told us they buy the gas forwards and that's why the fertilizer price is always where it is because they've bought the gas forwards. Because if the gas is always down, we always say, why is fertilizer not cheap? And they say, we've bought it forwards. Anyway, last year it was the world low. Anyway, now it's at like... Not quite a world high, but near enough perhaps, and it went up, I think, was it five times what it should have done, or eight times? Anyway, they stopped, they stopped making it, then the whole country then held to ransom then because of this lack of CO2, because the CO2 is used to seal your meat and to, to slaughter animals and different things like that. Anyway, the price of fertiliser, to be honest, at the moment, isn't that much of a worry. What is a worry, though, is whether we can actually get fertiliser, because without it, yields fall. If yields fall, we obviously can't make any money. There's no food then in the shelves. And also, if yields of grass and forage fall, what do you feed the animals with? That's that's the biggest issue, really. So next year, there could be like a lot of like you know difficult things going on, difficult decisions, just like they've been having to slaughter livestock this week because there's been no CO2 to, to, to sort of like slaughter them in an abattoir. They've had to shoot them. Anyway, here's some maths behind it. Last year, if you grew a crop of wheat, it was costing you, can you see because of the light? Maybe not, I don't know. Uh. It's costing £14.60 in fertiliser if you had a seven and a half tonne crop a week. This year, it's costing you £28 per tonne to produce, the, the, sorry, the, the, the fertiliser in, a tonne of wheat will cost £28, it'll be made up in the cost of the fertiliser. Last year it was only 14 so it's nearly double. But also, but, but if you had a 10 ton crop, last year you £11 of that cost of the ton was from fertiliser. This next year it'll be £21. So I think I've got my maths about right. But basically, 
fertilizer has gone up between 10 and 14 pound a ton depending on what your yield is on a price on, a, on the wheat now wheat at the moment is up from last year this time last year around about 20 to 30 pound a ton and on a futures market about 30 pound a ton so if you sold wheat today for next this time next year it's probably up 30 pound from where it was last year so that increase of whether it be 14 pound or 10 pound doesn't really matter because we're sort of better off but we're taking more risk that's the problem with the fertilizer price and also the fact that we, we can be held to ransom basically by an american company an american owned company which isn't that good now i know there's a lot of people watch this channel in america i've got nothing against american people but big business if there's money to be made they're ruthless about it and it's us guys that, that it costs us money now it would be great if i didn't have to pay another 30 grand this next year for my fertilizer and that 30 grand was profit into my business but it's not it's profit into a multinational business miles away that that's the annoying thing but as for the cost of a ton of wheat in production it's not actually that expensive fertilizer when you look at what you can get back from it and that is why they get away with doing it because you've got to have it you can't just say i'm not buying it you've got to get it from somewhere now i won't be buying it off cf and i haven't bought it off cf for about six or seven years i did use some of it last year because it came with part of a deal of of some land but i will buy imported urea because when i had a problem with some cf fertilizer once they wouldn't sort out the problem or give me a refund or whatever anything all they would do was sell it me at a slightly cheaper price and that slightly cheaper price was still five pound over the cost of imported ammonium nitrate so i bought the imported ammonium nitrate out of principle and i actually ended up better off even though they're so-called giving me a discount because they will just charge what they can get away with and this year with the gas prices they've been doing what they can anyway sorry for the big long rant and a bit bit of an exclamation but if you're a farmer out there and you're gonna have to pay nearly 400 pound a ton or 300 pound a ton for your nitrogen don't worry too much because if you get a three ton yield or a four ton yield it's only costing you 10 pound of that ton more or 14 pound of that ton more depending on what your yield is on top of the price i really hope that made sense because it was quite a long-winded exclamation anyway that's all for today now you can watch another video up there you can subscribe over there thanks everyone that's watching thanks to all the new subscribers don't forget if you're a new subscriber tell me where you're watching from